my name is Chrissy Clements. Everyone watches accesstv.org. <laughs>
I, I think they recognize it now, but I honestly believe prior to this election, they uh, they did not recognize it. If you look at not only the national campaign, but the local campaign, Senator McMahon lost, or, or Candidate McMahon lost uh, handsomely, and she did, within the last couple of weeks, begin to attack uh, Senator Chris Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and it didn't yeah. work. I mean, it's just not effective anymore. And I'm not angry at the 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 uh, the the use of it because, quite honestly, up until this past election and probably in 2008, it's been an effective tool. So I understand why they would use it, but I don't think. And as 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 the Democratic Party moves forward. They, they need to recognize that it's the uh, tactics won't be so blatant. But the voters are more sophisticated now. I mean, I, I heard a lot of talk about uh, ground game. Here's what I think happened. Uh, I think that uh, in the last part of the uh, strategy for uh, the Democratic Party or for the Obama campaign, um, money were not necessarily spent on the ads, per se, uh, on television and on uh, radio and in those places, I think what he did was he put money in the hands of those volunteers. Right. And by putting money in the hands of those volunteers, they went out and they knocked on doors and they went into uh, small businesses and they went uh, on college campuses uh, and they went into places and they uh, delivered a message that resonated with the young. Uh, in particular, and, and I think those folks came out in record numbers. I, I think that uh, most of the 200 or so that I say were in the Harford polls after the polls clo closed, and my guess would be that they would probably be uh, 25 or 30 years old and younger. Right. Yeah. So I think that the ground game that they refer to, uh, you know, could not be underestimated. I think, uh, you know, uh, educating a public and, and making them conscious of, of what's at stake uh, really had made the difference. I don't think that uh, you could buy this one, uh, which I think is what a lot of uh, the advertisement that was done in both the national and the state elections uh, attempted to do. Right. And, and also just part of the, uh, <clears throat> I noticed with myself, uh, Facebook and the use of social media was important uh, in this election, as it was in 2008, I think. It, how you deliver the message and that there are multiple forms of delivering the message was important in the Obama campaign uh, as they did in 2008 was able to capitalize on that uh, and I think the diversity uh, allows you to uh, widen your net so if you look at uh, even when you look at the rallies and you look at the makeup of the people that were standing next to candidate Romney or next to President Obama they were diverse, so it allows them to go into these communities because the people that were, as the volunteers, were looking like the people that they were soliciting. And, and let's make no mistake, I mean, the majority of the of the Republican Party is, is, is European white males, so to yeah. speak. So, I mean, that, that worked to their disadvantage. If you look at the uh, election coverage as it was coming in, and Historically, the coastal states are more diverse. Right. So right. Uh, looking at the map from Minnesota straight on down to Louisiana and Texas, those were all red states because it, of the makeup of the population. I, I think you hit, I think you hit a, uh, upon something that's going to resonate for years. I think the way uh, the, the uh, uh, Republican Party looks is not the way America looks. Exactly. You know, it looks like uh, the Republican Party is primarily made up of white Anglo-Saxons, if you will, and it seems like that the Democratic Party is just far more diverse and far more willing uh, and looks more like uh, America and the rest of the world, and it embraces a realer, uh, I think, realer version of democracy. And also, let's be frank, I, I do listen to a lot of talk radio, and one of the <clears throat> one of the things that I noticed when the uh, the base or people that supported Romney were calling the talk shows, uh, there would be this banter, but it wouldn't be based on the issues. And when someone tried to nail them down on issues, they weren't able to really articulate health care as one. Affordable health care and, and Obamacare, however you want to phrase it, I mean, that's going to benefit people. Uh, throughout this throughout this country, I, I I I I would definitely and I do feel that when it's looked upon 
uh, 50 years from now, people are going to probably raise the question of why didn't everybody always have health care? And, you know, with the unemployment rates uh, going up, if you lose your job today and you don't have health care because you don't have an employer no more, uh, a lot of people that are calling uh, uh, Obamacare uh, or speaking of it negatively will be in line receiving that benefit because it's, it's a good it's a good thing. People people need to well, be well. Short able to on specifics is actually is absolutely right. I think I I don't think I heard very much in terms of specifics throughout the campaign at all uh, from both parties to to some degree. Right. I think that there were more specifics, frankly, from the Democratic Party absolutely. than there than there appeared to be from the Republican Party. But you know, with all due respect to uh, you know the the Republican Party. Uh, I I think that they just simply don't get it. Right. Uh, I I think that uh, they have uh, uh, been holding on to this this principles uh, of you know less government, uh, less taxation, if you will, right. uh, less involvement in in people's lives. When when frankly, uh, you know, I believe personally that the 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 number one goal of government, of government itself, is to obtain justice. And, you know, how are you going to have a just, fair, equal, and impartial society when you have uh, this kind of elitist attitude, if you will, where, you know, it seems like uh, those folks who are at the top uh, just want to hold on to power and control? Uh, it seems like to me that they. Uh, were plan or in lots of cases planning to buy this election. You know the amount of money that was spent on this election. I think somebody said it, almost three billion dollars. I mean, come on, three billion dollars on an election, and but yet and still you're gonna cry and you're gonna you're gonna make unemployment and the unemployment rate the issue for this election. That three billion dollars that was spent, I'm sure that could have. Uh, gone into the economy and made, uh, 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 you know, uh, a lot of those folks who are unemployed, a lot of those folks who haven't uh, had a chance to work, uh, could have given them opportunity to, to participate in this democracy. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I mean, the, the democratic process, and this is why the concept of one person, one vote is an excellent concept. And if you look at it in the way the Constitution was written, some 200 plus years ago, I mean, it, it's a phenomenal uh, uh, philosophy to say that everyone has a stake in this government. Sure. And everyone sure. has a voice in this government. Absolutely. And I think that one of the uh, <clears throat> things that Obama was able to do is internalize that for a lot of people that may not have thought that what they thought mattered. And it, it did help in getting people out to vote because when you talk to the young people that did vote, they feel as though that the, the Democratic Party, whether or not they can do all that they say. There is a genuine concern that is felt, where in, in the post, in, in the Republican Party is not the same. So the concept of saying that every person matters is a great concept. And I just want to touch upon the opportunity now because we're in the city of Hartford, and what happens is that people need to understand that as a citizen, you have access to these elected officials. So, and you don't have to go spend the whole day, but it, 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 with technology now, it's a great thing because you can email your, your, your representatives on the state level and, mm -hmm. and your, your house mm -hmm. representatives and just find out what they plan on doing in, in this election. Uh, you can go to Connecticut General Assembly and type in your address if you're not sure who your representative is. Mm -hmm. And you could drop them an email and tell them what it is that you're concerned about. If it's crime, say, look, there's a lot of crime in my neighborhood. What are you going to do about it? Is it education? Is it health? You know, these people are accessible. So now that the election is over and we are kind of like feeling the the uh, the victory here, it, 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 it becomes... And it's so interesting uh, you, you say that, too, as a matter of fact, because one of the things that I kept hearing from people who were working the polls were, you know, you've got this kind of turnout for a national election, but... What about you know local elections, if you will? Uh, those folks, President Obama, and those people nationally, obviously, uh, you know, they have a, a more of an indirect impact upon us. But the people locally have a direct impact upon us. 
uh, our council people, our mayors, our selectmen, that kind of thing. They directly impact what we what we do every single day. Uh, yet there's not this kind of participation in this democracy uh, for that those elections that you get in the presidential election. Uh, and and I think that you know you're you're, you're kind of speaking to that. You're saying uh, we have access to them living in Hartford, uh, and I've always felt this way being the capital city of the state of Connecticut. You know the state office building is uh, minutes away from us. This capital is minutes away from, from us, uh, but yet and still uh, we live in one of the poorest cities in America. Don't you think that that's something uh, ironic, something you know paradoxical about that? Is that I think weird? I, I, it, it's weird <laughs> in so much as uh, I got a lot of hope because it's fixable and it's not uh, a problem that cannot be addressed. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, we have local leaders that need to uh, step up a little bit. And what's cool and what's, what people got to understand about the local politics is that you have a greater impact and a direct impact and uh, uh, almost uh, immediate impact on, on local politics and local policy. I mean, when you go into a school system and, and they no longer have some extracurriculum activities, those are direct results of budgetary cuts, right. those are direct results of, <clears throat> of decisions that are made, and, and the information is public, you know, and as we move forward as a country, I think that is one of the, uh, the, the hottest commodities, is information, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. access to someone's mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. because we are a short circuit society where you only have a few minutes, so like when the town hall has a meeting, that, that information is public. Yeah. And, and, and you got to go in there and sit down because if you say that the police are treating people uh, unkindly and unfavorably, you could go to you could go to these public hearings and say, I saw a police officer do this. Or you can say, you know, why is my kid not able to play? Uh, uh, why is my child not able to wrestle anymore? Mm -hmm. You know, why do you guys take away wrestling? Because when they have those and make those decisions, we're not sitting at the table to kind of address those concerns. I mean, there's other municipalities that, that sit down mm -hmm. and, and they're at the table saying, we need 100 million for this, we need 80 million for this, we need 20 million for this. And if you're not sitting at the table when the check is being written, your name is not gonna be on the Well, check. I think participating in the process is what it basically boils down to. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this this thing we call politics is, is not one of those things that you can uh, necessarily participate in by sitting on the sideline. Right. I mean, you you know, you're impacted by it if you're sitting on the sidelines. But why not become you know more involved in it and helping to shape those policies that you're referring to and help to you know let those uh, people who are legislating you know understand how you feel about some of the decisions that they're making. Uh, I, you know, I still find it you know really you know kind of difficult to understand how you know. Uh, in Hartford, in particular, uh, you you know the, the insurance industry uh, you've got Fortune 100 companies, uh, but yet and still, you know, miles just a couple of miles away, stones throws away. Uh, you know, you have housing, uh, um, uh, transitional housing, and housing uh, complexes where unemployment is 70 and 80 percent. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it just makes no sense to me that. Uh, they're not developing the talent that sits here and sits around them. I mean, what what can be done about that? I mean, you know, is are people in politics uh, interested in those kinds of things? Uh, that's a question, isn't it? Right, and, and I think people are, and, and we have to start identifying people and holding them accountable, holding their feet to the fire, uh, and, 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 and making them uh, hold those promises that they made on their way into office. So we, we, we can't impact that. The same strategy, the ground game. We need to get out on the ground and we need to start educating people as to some of the issues that directly affect their lives. I, I always say, and I, I, you know, when I was at the university, I would debate some of my professors because the, 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 the discussion would come up that people of color, people in these communities didn't care. And I would always uh, fire back with that if they, if they knew there was a choice, 
they would definitely make the better choice. And I'm not convinced that our, our people that live in minorities in Hartford understand that they do have a choice, mm. that they do have a say. Mm. So mm. Uh, education is, is a big part of this equation. And once people know that the, the true power that they hold and the rights that they have, they will be more involved. If you go to any legislative <coughs> meeting, not any, but the majority of them, they open it up for public comment. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if people even know that you can, as a, as a citizen of, uh, of Connecticut or as a citizen of Harper, when information or, or decisions are being made here at the state legislative office, but Hartford is small, so if you live in Hartford, you're, you're, you can get to the Capitol. Mm -hmm. You're not mm -hmm. going to be out of reach. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. can go in there and you can talk about any topic you want, or, or you can sit in any meeting just about and, and, and voice your opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, you do have to put forth some time. Uh, and you mentioned the unemployment rate, but not to be, be be funny, but if you're not working, then you do have the time. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, So, yeah. I, 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 you know. Why you know, not make productive use of that yeah, absolutely, time? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. you know, and, and I do feel that people <clears throat> need to uh, take a look as an individual at what their uh, role is on the community. Uh, and you don't have to uh, uh, devote your, your whole life to it, but I think you do have to at least examine how you think that you fit in the community and not just people that live in Hartford. Like I said, technology is a great asset, and, and we have uh, people that uh, of color that might have moved out of the suburb or moved out of the city of Hartford, but their input and, and their skill set is needed to help move people that are, are, are not in the same position out of that position and, and, and obtain uh, a, a better life for people that well, are, that well that's that, that's our that's part of the responsibility I mean you know this thing I call justice I actually can define mm -hmm. I mean some people say you know justice and it sounds you know it's a vague term you know it sounds like you know it's something that uh, uh, you know you know people hear and it's uh, uh, it, you know, it resonates and it means something, you know, but what exactly? When you say justice, you know, what does that really mean? Well, you know, how I define it, ju justice is really based upon three things. You know, for me, justice means everybody can participate in it. Everybody can participate in it and, and equally participate in it. Everybody is a part of the distribution of it. It means they benefit directly from whatever participation, you know, is they're involved in. And the third thing is full accountability, transparency. I mean, that's what, to me, justice is. I mean, you, you've got to really, be, I think, be able to, you know, somehow get that across to the majority of people that if it's going to be real justice, if government is going to, you know, really play the role that it should play in our lives, that you have to have, you know, full participation. You have to be able to benefit from the participation the same way everybody else does, not just a few, not just the elite, and you have to have complete transparency where everybody can see what's going on, you know, as opposed to just a few knowing you know, what's actually taking place, what kind of decisions are being made. See, I think it's those kinds of terms, you know, that, that tend to throw people, you know, and tend to, you know, uh, keep people away from, you know, participating, you know, and being more involved in certain activity. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I, I do believe that. I mean, so we got to even go back further because <clears throat> to be involved, to be able to internalize the information, to be able to sit in, in, a, in a legislative meeting down at the state capitol, you have to have the ability to kind of understand the information. So it gets back to a larger issue, which is an issue of mine that I do believe that it, 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 it's, it's like the, uh, the big elephant in the room, so to speak, and that's education. And having been in uh, in uh, interning at a couple of schools, uh, that right there is, is a big problem for our community, not only just reading and writing at the level which we read and write, and, and this other word that 
that's used a lot at the universities now is that critical thinking, being able to uh, <clears throat> decipher information mm -hmm. and internalize information and then being able to utilize the information and we fall far behind in those categories. So a big part of educating people is to start a lot earlier than, than, than where we're starting at mm -hmm. because we, we are lacking in those areas as, as a race. And, and it's to our disadvantage. So it's not, it's, it's great that we need employment and all that, but we need to be able to become thinkers because as a people, we've always been thinkers. And that, yeah, it's absolutely true. I mean, it's interesting you would say that because the first point in, uh, I believe, President Obama's uh, plan is to develop uh, this, you know, the uh, educational component, if you will, to make us. Uh, more skillful to uh, give us uh, what it takes in order for us to participate uh, in this economy. We have to be, uh, you know, uh, able to uh, to be nimble and uh, problem solvers. Okay, uh, you know, have the ability to see uh, where there's a chance to, you know, make changes and to uh, find better ways to become, uh, you know, more efficient you know, at, at handling matters. You know, it's interesting, they, they, they talk about, you know, the economy, uh, but, you know, to me, I think they could have been a little bit more simpler in terms of explaining it. You know, to me, uh, the problem, uh, as I understand it, is, is that as a country, we consume more than we produce. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I mean, when, it, when they talk about you know, us having a deficit, you know, this this national political issue of, you know, us having all of this debt, how do you pay it off? We can't keep continuing to spend the way that we do. We basically are consuming more than we're spending, I mean, than we're producing. So now we got to figure out, you know, how to produce more and exactly what we produce. Uh, you know, that's those are the kinds of big issues that uh, I think that they're going to start to try to shape and make where we have to have some input well, well, in. And, and we, we can have some input. I, I had the, uh, this is my second time in about three years traveling to the Midwest going through Indiana. Now, interesting, when you get off the highway, I mean, literally for uh, one or two miles, everything is boarded up. Not most things, everything. The only thing that wasn't boarded up. Which highway is this? Uh, I don't know the exact exit. This is Indiana, Indiana. Yeah, Indiana. off the highway. Okay. I was actually going to see Michael Jackson's birthplace. Uh -huh. So it's the exit and GPS now to forward me the the ability to just kind of like turn left when it says turn left. Right. So I don't have to, I don't have to pay attention to exit signs. Uh, but when we right, got right. off the highway going to the Michael Jackson house, it was nothing uh, economically viable in this community. Uh, and literally for about a mile, a mile and a half off the highway, everything was boarded up. The only thing that wasn't boarded up, I think, was the church's chicken. Uh, there was a post office, a McDonald's, and a Burger King. But everything else was boarded up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> one of the things, and, and it's not that hard. See, now that people know that they can affect change, you have to come behind that. And, and you look at companies that are manufacturing outside of the United States. See, the reason why a company like Nike or a company like Levi's or any of these companies that now manufacture outside the U.S. are able to manufacture outside the U.S. because there's an economic benefit to their sure. manufacturing Absolutely. outside the U.S. So as citizens, the people that are making those decisions that allow these companies to benefit economically are voted in by your vote. Right. So if, if a strategy is put in place to start demanding that these companies start coming back, and you don't demand that they move back, but you demand that these these concessions that are given to companies that are manufacturing outside the U.S. be taken away. And right. if politicians don't take them away, right. then you start uh, voting them out of office, and you start putting people in office that are going to agree with, with, with those philosophies, and then that's how you start bringing jobs back into the United States. I mean, so there, there, there are ways to kind of... There are means to an Amer end. America and first. It, 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 yeah, exactly. Amer yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've always said, you know, right here in our own own backyard. You know, I'm, I, that's why, you know, it's been puzzling to me, you know, how, you know, you sit here among a giant like a Hartford Insurance Group, the Fortune 100 company, United Technologies, the Fortune 100 companies. These country, companies do business around the world. 
I mean, but but their impact upon the communities is is negligible. Now, I'm not saying that they're not philanthropic. They they give. They have their own foundation set up. They and they really, I think, make an, an effort. But you know, the effort that they're made is is really a, more or less charity. It's not. Absolutely. It's not. It's not really. You know, helping to develop uh, the talent absolutely. that you have to, in the, in the to summer, participate in the global market. In the summer, you go to the cookout and you want a hot dog. You want it in the roll. <laughs> you don't want anybody just to slap the hot dog in your hand. Right, right. And that's what they're doing. They're right, like, right. take the hot dog. Right. Don't worry about the bread or the right, condiment. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you're going yeah. to be happy because you got right. this hot dog, and you're going to eat the hot dog because yeah, yeah. you're hungry. Yeah, yeah. You're hungry, so yeah, we're and, not and in a position yeah, to yeah. to turn down those those philanthropic gifts. But sure. it's not what we sure. need. Right. As, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a community to move forward and to be uh, have a higher quality of life than that. Well, and we've, and we've, s we've settled for that. In, Absolutely. In a lot of cases, and, and part of the problem, and this is where I think, you know, the difference was made, too, in the election, the presidential election, too. I think we, we realize that that's the direction and that's a, uh, an old play. Absolutely. If you will, that's the that comes from the old playbook. Absolutely. You know, okay, well, you know, you guys were happy with whatever, yeah. you know, before, so you're gonna settle for that, you know, even now, you know, and allow us, you know, yeah. the more sophisticated people to go on and do what we do yeah. and make things better for you, Absolutely. kind of thing. It's a, you know, it's really kind of a slave mentality Absolutely. to me, you know, where you have, you know, basically, uh, you know, somebody who. Uh, you know, is supposedly, um, uh, you know, of a far more superior ideology uh, dictating to you, you know, particularly the way that you, they think you ought to go. Um, I think that there's too much of that, don't you think? Absolutely. But we're, we're not absent of blame in this uh, concept because if, yeah, we allow if, if you allow it to happen, yeah. and, and, and there are direct paths. And, and I, I think one of the areas we fall short is not uh, pooling our resources together uh, in the varying, uh, the varying uh, roles that people could play in this process. Sure. And I'm going to touch upon something that, I, you know, sometimes I get a lot of negative feedback, but one of the, one of the areas, that, and, and we're going to go back further because before you even make it to school to get educated, you have an interaction with a parent. That's true. And, and, and our parenting <laughs> skills... Uh, as, as, as a whole, and I'm not saying every person of color is not a bad parent, but we need to examine the, the parenting process. Oh, wow. Because we're not preparing our children to even uh, perform in the educational setting. So if they're unprepared going in, then the chances of them succeeding in that environment are, are, are almost null. I agree. Uh, and those are yeah. the things that we need to look at. And in right. solving those problems, are not something that I need to look to my legislative uh, uh, bodies right. to, to do that. Right. You know? and, and, right. And, and, and I want to be taken serious, and I'm speaking as, as a community, we want to be taken seriously. Sure. But we're, we're coming to the game, and I love sports. That's like going to the football game, and you got a tennis racket on, you got a tennis racket, and, and some a, shorts, you right. know, and everybody else got on a football uniform. Right, right, right. You're not going to succeed in that game. No, no, you're not going to succeed in that game. You're not going to succeed in you that game. You don't have the right equipment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, that's, that's, you know, I, I talked about, and that to me is the challenge. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to me, you know, I think America is, you know, basically lost lost itself in terms of the order in the priority uh, of things, if you will. Because it was, uh, and, and you mentioned, you said back, and I'm thinking back, you know, to when the Declaration of Independence was written and those kinds of things, you know, in, the, in that document. You know, it mentions God, it mentions supreme being, it mentions creator mm -hmm. over 50 times in that document. So America was originally intended to be a deeply religious country. Absolutely. It was intended to be that way. So they knew it was God first, and God was a defined term. It wasn't some nebulous or vague concept. You know, everybody understood that you know, there was something more important than us as an individual. You know, it was it was it was a God that we had to, you know, be responsible to. And the second thing this the point that you just made was family. Mm -hmm. You know, family was I mean, it's essential that you and it's critical, it's vital 
that your family and that the family unit uh, actually play a major part in your development. I mean, you know, understanding behavior, understanding manners, respect, you know, love for one another. So the order was God first, your family next, and then you talk about what government can right. do for you. Right. And so now, you know, we seem to put more emphasis on government, right. you know, than we do on the family. Yeah. And we put more emphasis on government than we do God. Yeah, exactly. And so we've lost our order. And so I think the challenge is, uh, and part of the challenge is, and the reason why we do this show is to try to, to correct that order. Absolutely. And, and, and I think we need to be more critical. One of the tools that uh, if you look at anyone that is in, and we'll take the color out of this, anyone that's, has, oh sure, absolutely. Uh, achieve some certain levels of success is is two ingredients that I noticed when I was in elementary school were absent at such a young age, but are critical, and they're not as well defined maybe when you're in the, the third or second grade, but they need to start to be addressed. And one of the things is is discipline, and yes. and, and uh, yes. uh, self evaluation, right? Because I need to evaluate that what I did was successful or not and mm -hmm. I need to be honest with my evaluation of self mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if I'm honest with my evaluation of self then I'll be able to move forward and make the necessary adjustments and improve the quality of my life so like when I look at uh, a, a, a parent and this has always been a, that's a that point of contention that's with that me. principle of accountability absolutely yeah. because when I yeah. see the person that says and, and I know some some of our sisters out there and, and their, their sons are incarcerated and, and they say they don't know how that happened. Absolutely, you know how that happened. If sure. you evaluate yourself as a parent, and I'm not just talking about females, I'm talking about men too. Because oh, if you're absent, of course. if you're absent from that relationship, sure. then you, uh, by default, are just as guilty. So it, it, if your child then is at a certain age, and and and, and they they're, they're finding themselves in certain situations, maybe involved in law enforcement or other things like that. Do you, if you honestly assess their life, you can make a direct connection between how everything turned out and and, and, and your involvement and, and your skill set as a parent. One of the, one of the things that I see a lot in our community when I'm out is these this uh, this concept of yelling at someone. Yeah. It's not effective. It's just, it's just not effective. Mm, you, mm. you can't scream at people mm. and expect results from them. You know, and, and just those little things that, absent of the bigger picture which we started at, are, are those are those 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 things that we need to examine, and we don't need a policy to do that. Well, but but as a society, uh, you know, I remember, um, you know, uh, being a part of you know law enforcement. Uh, and watching what law enforcement do, they're taught, quite frankly, to do, to use their voice, you know, to command, you know, uh, you know, certain attention or whatever the case may may be. And I'm sure part of that, you know, whole discipline thing and trying to get order is to be able to, you know, raise your voice, if you will, to a degree. Where, where people at least know that there's emphasis being placed upon something. Now, I'm not trying to defend necessarily the position. I'm just trying to understand it. Right, and, 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 so, and there is, there is a, 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 a need for that. So if, it's, if the situation is breeding some chaos, then it, I can see the, the point in maybe uh, raising your voice and, and using a more direct tone, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you just want someone to take out the garbage, <laughs> right, 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 you, know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you no, might you not need to scream oh, at no. them to do that. No, and, no. And, and, and it's 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 using some certain disciplinary tactics more sparingly and, and being more heavy on the educational piece of it. Because it, yeah. let's face it, when when you, from the time when you come out the womb, uh, and, and as a parent, I believe that your your most important role. Your most important role, and in, in, in the number one role as a parent, is to prepare that child to live in this society as an adult. Now, a, along that road, you're gonna love that child. You, you see what I'm saying? And, well, you, and well, you're gonna have absolutely an actual with this child. But uh, uh, you, I need to prepare, or a parent, I believe, needs to prepare their child uh, for an adult. Just a quick example. I was I was in D.C. Uh, <clears throat> about a year, two years ago. 
Yeah, and, and I don't want to make this a, a race thing. I'm just, I'm just. But, but I'm going to take race but, out of it. But at, least, I'm a, but at least factor in the the fact that there could be underlying circumstances involving children. I mean, because you know, all children are, and none of us are perfect. But children come out, you know, uh, and there could be uh, physical uh, maladies. There could be mental, uh, you know, discrepancies. There, there, there could be a number of, of things that, and that's where you know, having a society. You know that cares about the fact that you know everybody's not always on even par in terms of their development. Uh, that that there is a need to to uh, uh, compensate. You know for those. For I, those I things. think I think is, that's part of the equation. But I think also that if we if we go down too far down that road, then we're we're, we're, we're taking responsibility away from. From the parent, and I say that to say this. So I, 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 I witnessed this incident. Where we're at. I, I witnessed yeah. this incident where one mother uh, was yelling at the child, and another person was telling the child to, to dance, and then the other mother was explaining the, to this other child all of the stuff that he was seeing in this train station. So, you know, and and and, and 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 when I say that, I'm saying that as I'm taking an information. I'm thinking, so I'm learning that that's a train, that's a track, that sound is a horn, and you can look at the other child starting to kind of like his mind is kind of going, and he's asking more questions, where the child that was being yelled at was was just at unease, and he was he was not comfortable, mm -hmm. and he was antsy, and that's just a little example of some of the things that we need to look at that are correctable without any outside help. And, and, and when I said before is that you have a lot of parents, a lot of people of color that do have that skill set, and we need to find a way to merge those people with other young mothers that don't have that skill set. Well, and, 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 and fathers too. I got two children, and being a part of their life was, was the benefit brought me great joy in speaking to some people that aren't part of their child's life. I think they're, they're missing an opportunity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to forge this relationship. So mm -hmm. just, just providing people with information, because I, I, I'm on this thing now that that's, that's our new, that's our, that our new get, is the information. It's well, not so much, for, if I have information, I can make better decisions. Well, information is absolutely essential, but you know, it, you know it's the application of knowledge that makes the difference. But don't you have to have it though <laughs> to well, be sure, able to apply it? Sure, you've got to you've got to get it first. But it's got to you know it's got to be uh, you know suited to uh, satisfy you know certain conditions. I mean there are there are certain there are certain knowledge, if you will, that you know doesn't necessarily fit into you know a particular category. But when you're talking about just basic fundamental development. Uh, is what I think you're, you're referring to when you talk about, you know, the responsibility of the home and the family. Absolutely. You know, then then nobody, you know, is absolved of those responsibilities. Everybody has to be involved in that. Uh, uh, every it's certainly everybody in the immediate family, mm -hmm. but not just the immediate family, but also you know, uh, people who are not in the immediate family, if you will. I I believe with all my heart, Brian that I am my brother's keeper. Absolutely. I, I don't think that uh, I can I can say, okay, well, Brian did that, and, you know, that's just him, and so, you know, that's, that's, on, that's on him. I, I just don't feel that way. But I think that there is a part of society that has gotten to that point. Absolutely. You know, and I think that that's part of what's missing uh, now that makes you know the conditions that we live in so much worse. See, I I think that you know it's it's again it's gotten away from us. You know this whole notion of family, you know, being more important than government. Right. You know, being more important than you know policy makers. You know, uh, I'm with you. I think that those things are solvable. I think you can fix those things if you. But people, parents, us as as human beings, I think. Uh, should be given, I think, uh, more latitude, should be given uh, uh, more time, if you will, to devote to to solving those kinds of problems. The question is, how do you get that? And I think, I think that's where people have, you know, because in this capitalistic society, you know, they're forcing us 
uh, to a great degree to go out and spend countless amount of time and hours, uh, you know, building, you know, a better spaceship, you know, if you will, and building, uh, you know, something, some new technology. Well, and, and I think that, 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 that to bring it back to the election, that's why the, the political process is, is, is an important part of this entire equation, because they can allow or they can help with supportive services. And we've gotten away, and, and because of our, uh, our, our minimal participation in the process, when these budgets are being decided upon, we're right. not in that process of, of making sure that, you know, these community agencies and these supportive services uh, remain in play. So we need to make sure that these remain in place so that I can start connecting people that have experience and people that are able to kind of help with the educational process because the educational process is beyond the walls of a school. And sure. in that time when school is out, to mid, early evening is we're not we're well, not uh, well, engaging the, the, enough. The, the enough. question the question from for me as a parent and as a, a an activist, if you will, and somebody who you know loves my community, loves my family, is how do I uh, how do I spend uh, the the enough time and enough energy in order to get a a, a certain result? Because you know, frankly, I I think that. You know, development uh, continues. I mean, it's a you know the process of making us become what we should be uh, doesn't necessarily stop after age 18 or age 21 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think I think what it does is it is basically it continues, and we continue to evolve as human beings. So we have to factor in time. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> in this equation uh, if we're going to make these problems uh, solvable. That's the challenge. Right. It is a challenge. And, and uh, each week, me and Russell both try to bring that challenge to you, to everybody. And everybody has a voice. Everybody has a say. Absolutely. Everything you, you want to do is important. And we all participate in this community. We all participate in this democracy. Uh, we, we encourage your participation to be positive. But nonetheless, you are a part of our community, and, 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 I, I, and, and I'm glad that we were able to have this discussion today. Hopefully, some of the people uh, thought it was enlightening. So, so do I. So do I. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, you know, you can reach me at 860-597-2724 uh, when you feel the urge. 860-597-2724. Let's talk about it. We'd like to hear what your challenges are. Uh, this has been the election review, uh, an up close and personal uh, view at uh, what took place during our presidential election, state elections, and uh, what's happening in our community. We want to thank you for tuning in to the challenge. Uh, as always, uh, be blessed. Uh, and again, thank you for having me today, Russell. Uh, if you want to do something, uh, contact me at do something 1865 at gmail.com. That's do something 1865 at gmail.com.